Since its inception in 1925, the aviation industry in Nigeria has grown tremendously in scope and activity. From its modest beginnings on a Kano race course, the sector has witnessed rapid expansion with several airlines operating hundreds of domestic and foreign flights daily from Nigeria's 22 airports. At the beginning, all personnel in the sector came mainly from Europe, North America and Asia. However, in a bid to correct this anomaly, the Nigerian College of Aviation Technology, NCAT, was established by the Federal Government of Nigeria in Zaria, Kaduna State. The global expansion in the aviation sector, coupled with a similar growth in the domestic sector in recent times, has rapidly increased the demand for pilots. As a result, the establishment of more aviation training schools in Nigeria and the West African region became imperative. The International Aviation College, Ilori, was the second in Nigeria and the first to be initiated and owned by a state government in the West Africa sub-region. The International Aviation College, Ilori, is located on a 20-hectare landmass in an area that is populated by aviation sector infrastructures, including the cargo terminal and the Ilori International Airport. The airport boasts of a 10,000-foot runway equipped with all-weather instrument approach and other facilities expected in a modern airport, which makes it an alternative to the Murtala Mohammed International Airport in Lagos, and no doubt conducive for training international class pilots. The International Aviation College, Ilori, is designed to train different professionals in various sectors of the rapidly growing aviation industry, including pilots for fixed and rotary wings, cabin crew, air traffic controllers and engineers. The intention of the International Aviation College, Ilori, is to be globally recognized as a leading institution in the provision of aviation training through the quality of its output, which centers on safety, quality, and responsibility. In line with the vision of the owners, the Kwara State Government, the school is structured along the collegiate system, with four schools at the epicenter. The schools include the Flight School, the Air Traffic Control School, the Maintenance School, and the Support Services School. The flight school is capable of providing world-class training for fixed-winged and rotary-winged aircraft pilots from zero level, as well as recurrence levels, to the acquisition of a pilot's license within 15 months. The school also offers training for private, commercial and the integrated commercial pilots. It is quite instructive to mention that the college has already presented its students to external assessment with all of them attaining excellent performances. Uh, the performance of the student, uh, it's great. And all the external examiners are very, very happy with the standard here at International Aviation College because it's a world standard we have. We have what, the best state of the art when it comes to the simulator because it's one of a kind. Even in the best flying schools in the world, they don't go higher than this. This is what they use for their initial training. And this is what we used. And then it's equipped with a glass cockpit. As you can see, it's glass cockpit and we can simulate it to even fly the original the analog six pack, the olden, which is the older version. So actually we fly the glass cockpit. So the examiners are very, very happy with the standard here and all our pilots are doing wonderfully well around the world and where they are. In the course of their training, students of the International Aviation College, Ilori, are exposed to state-of-the-art aircraft, modern classrooms, flight simulators, a library and a computer room amongst other requisite facilities managed by highly qualified and experienced class and flight instructors. Training is conducted through a global standard instructional curriculum based on the world-renowned Oxford Aviation Academy's curriculum designed by renowned airline pilots and instructors. The institution provides excellent training in the flight school deploying new generation EFIS equipped airplanes for both abinito and recurrent flight training 
while short courses are also provided in human factors, crew resource management, safety management systems, leadership and team building in aviation, ICAO English rating and teaching amongst others. The school is also collaborating with the Kwara State University to provide practical training for its aeronautical engineering students and jointly award certificates to graduates while students of the Aviation College receive training in management, leadership and other areas essential to their professional lives. In essence, students of the International Aviation College will have the benefit of the college's certification and degrees from the university simultaneously. Not many organizations or not many school aviation schools will be where we are today. All the examiners that have come to conduct exams for us, be it uh, flight or ground, they are saying our standards are high. So I guarantee anybody who wants to employ any of our graduates, they are trained in a modern glass cockpit aircraft from zero hours to the now to the day they graduate. So they can walk into a 747. Our graduates, they will walk into a cockpit of a 747 of today, or seven Airbus 380. It's the same glass, suit, glass cockpit. Incidentally, our aircraft that we use, Diamond 40 and 42, they are joystick, just like the Airbus. So if you have a graduate that is going, a graduate that is getting a job that in a company that fly Airbus, it's joystick. Within its short existence, the college has skilled stringent requirements for accreditation, leading to the award of pilot licenses and paving the way for the inaugural flights by its student pilots in 2012, a feat that was flagged off by Governor Abdul Fattah Ahmed. True to type, many of the students have attained several solo flight hours. Talking about my first solo, it was... Some, some t first time taking off, seeing yourself alone in the air, sometimes ah, looking by your side, nobody there, it was scary. <laughs> I'm, I'm the only one up here and I have to land this aircraft. So it was interesting and it was some, somehow scary to that. Oh, this is my first solo and I have to keep going like this with time, going on solo, going on solo. And definitely before you can get your PPL, your commercial license, you have to fly a lot of solo hours. I've had a lot of solo, I've gone to several places, gone to Akure, Ibadan, uh, Patigi, all over Shaki, any village across the river Nanja. I've gone a lot of solo, over, I had a lot of hours on solo now. The Kwara International Aviation College campus is a fully functional facility with great attention paid to ambience, functionality and aesthetics. Training facilities at the college have been carefully chosen to meet the vision of the institution. The flight simulators are the latest of its kind and have the ability to create the visuals of over 100 airports across the world in the course of training the Bodin pilots. Uh, we're in the simulation room and the simulator behind me is called the FNPT-2. Uh, it's one of the most sophisticated uh, simulators you can use for initial flight training. Um, this is where we bring our students and put them through the initial course before they jump into the actual aircraft. So they get to know the basis here, the importance of the simulator, how to handle the machine, the right airspeed to use, and then they, it gives them an opportunity to get flexible with the control. So when they get into the main, the actual aircraft, it becomes very easy for them. And then, more so, the simulator we have, the MNP PT2, it's. Um, highly sophisticated in the sense that you can put in all the scenarios, all the possible scenarios uh, you can ever have in the actual flight at any point in time. So you can give it any kind of weather you have, adverse weathers, good weathers, bad weathers, whatsoever you want. Then there are some maneuvers that might not be very economical for us to actually practice them in the aircraft. Maybe due to the time it might take us to practice them and the cost because it's actually more expensive to fly the actual aircraft than the simulator. So we bring them here to the simulator, we put them through the whole thing, um, they're proficient enough, then we take them to the actual aircraft. At that point in time, you see that now it becomes very easy for the student to pick it up and then he continue the flight training. For its practical flight training, the college selected Diamond Aircraft in view of its long flight range and low cost of maintenance. As at the moment, the college has four Diamond Aircraft in its fleet. Recently, after the 
uh, receiving uh, one is excellently received the two aircraft he purchased for us at the airport here um, and uh, he promised hotel accommodation because that is another thing and he has directed us to start looking into engineering school so most people don't know about this school and I'm sure with the arrival of those aircraft when the first set of aircraft came it was quiet nobody knew but this time we we'll make sure that we everybody should see what we are doing and uh, through what you are doing you can tell people that Kwara State International Aviation College has come to stay. To maintain a world-class standard admission into the college is through a stringent process designed to recruit only the best students and is open to applicants above 17 years with a science background. In its usual character the Kwara State Government promoters of the institution has appointed a combination of experts in aviation training, aviation business management, and public policy. In a testimony to the college's faculty of experts, the pioneer rector of the college went on to become the director general of the Nigeria Civil Aviation Authority, 